Okay, so after releasing that last cover, I thought it may be cool to take a look exactly at how I produced and mixed the cover itself. So let's go ahead. I want to take a look first at the drums for the cover of When We Were Young by Architects. So let's take a look at drums. It is a contact instrument, and I'm using Get Good Drums Architects, which I think fits the song very well, obviously. I did do a pretty good amount of processing on the drums, though. I'm saying everything except for the toms to their own channels. All the toms are on the same channel, but we have a kick channel, snare channel, a toms channel, overheads, and room. And also, a fun fact, this drums channel right here with the MIDI on it, I'm not sure what channel this is, but it sounds like a far room to me with mainly the snare. It's... But it also has some upfront kick. It's kind of weird, because here's the room channel. So, kind of strange. Oh well, so let's solo the drums and see what those sound like. So looking back at the drums, I would say there are probably two things I'm not completely satisfied with on the drum sound. One being the kick. I don't think it hits quite as hard as it could have. I wish I would have spent more time on the kick. And during any kind of snare rolls or fills or anything, um, I should have automated at least the volume on the snare sample or something because it can get a little ridiculous sometime. And I am triggering a sample on the snare. So I wish I would have spent a little more time on those. But other than that, I think the drum sounds awesome. Let's take a look at the kick processing. Got the Plugin Alliance Brainworks SSL channel. Looks like I'm boosting about three decibels at 8K. Um, boosting a decibel at, looks like 3K with a pretty wide band on that. Looks like I'm actually cutting around 200 Hertz. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, getting rid of a little bit of that beater sound. Looks like I'm actually boosting at about 60 hertz, almost two decibels. And then I think I'm doing a little bit of compression as well. Yeah, getting about six decibels of compression, four to one ratio with a fast release. And then I'm, I'm using also the saturation on this plugin. So let's see what the kick sounds like with and without that. Definitely can hear that saturation and the high end a little more. So this right here will definitely transform it. I'm using a kick sample from Brian Hood. But I'm only running it at 50%. Let's see what it would sound like. Here's what the sample sounds like at 100. So some of that. And then Pro Q3, I'm going to be doing some boosting on the low end, I bet. Yeah, all right, so getting rid of a little bit more of that beater sound. Boosting some like 60 hertz. And a little bit of almost 6K. And that's the kick drum. Let's take a look at the snare. We will turn off all the plugins. So the first thing is I'm triggering, yep, two samples. These are two samples from Joey Sturge's Tones. We have Snare Smack Blend and Snare Smack Room. I didn't feel like there was quite enough room on the snare sound toward the end, so I added this room sample. But this is going to probably transform the sound of the snare as well. I do think, though, with this sample and some of the processing, we got closer to the album or, or the actual snare from when we were young. And I'm only running this at 34%, so it's not a huge difference. So that's what that sounds like. And then we got Pro Q3. So it looks like we have a cutting some low end. I have a almost five decibel boost at 138 hertz. I was cutting, I think this is probably the ringing sound. Yeah, a little bit of ring. Yeah, 
I was boosting some high and like crazy. That's 10 decibels at 6K. I think it sounds better. And it's a little weird, but you know, kind of just do what you got to do sometimes. And so I took a look at the snare and the fundamental on the snare was like around, around 190. So I divided that in two to find like the lower octave basically. And that was right around probably 95 Hertz. And I boosted a little bit of R bass on that to just give it a little more body to the snare. And when I say a little bit of body, I mean a lot of body, but I like, again, I think it sounds good in the context of everything. All right. And then the last thing we did was we are sending it to little plate. This is a snare room channel just on default settings and then I EQ'd that a lot of low end out and added a little bit of high end. So on toms, all I'm doing, I think the toms in the in the instrument sound really cool. So all I'm doing is cutting a little bit of mud and boosting a whole lot of high end. I could probably even boost more high end, but you know, it sounds pretty good. Take a look at this overhead channel. All I did here was use BX refinement to get rid of some nasty whistles and to boost a little bit of presence. Um, yeah, I'm not saturating it at all. So this is what it sounds like without it. So to my ears, you can definitely tell I'm getting rid of some of some of that like three or four K. Those those nasty whistles right there. This is probably one of my favorite plugins. I used it all over the mix. And let's get to the room channel. The room channel is being heavily compressed, pretty heavily EQ'd, and then I'm hitting it with BX refinement again. So let's take a listen without these plugins. I should note in contact, I'm sending more of the snare to the room channel than pretty much any of the other instruments. So that's why you're hearing a ton of snare. All right, let's take a look at this first compressor. Just absolutely smashing it with an eight to one ratio. Pretty fast attack and then a fast release. Pretty standard stuff there. Let's take a look at Pro Q3. I'm just getting rid of some subbiness. Uh, sounds like there's probably some mud around there and some nasty whistles I didn't like. Yeah, just cleaning that up a little bit. Yeah. And then I wanted to clean it up a little more with BX refinement. It looks like I actually used the saturation knob on here this time and boosted a little presence. Just getting rid of some more. We can listen to the solo filter. Just getting rid of those really gross whistles. All right, so that's the drums. This is what the drum sound sounds like. Let's go on to bass. I think bass would be cool to go over now. So I've got two channels on bass. I don't have the contact instrument up, but it's Euro bass from Submission Audio, just the DI sound. And I split that into a high and a low. Let's take a look first at the low. Just a lot of sub information there pretty much. So let's take all these plugins off. Just a really good bass DI. So the first thing I do is I'm filtering it down all the way to 160. Getting rid of all that high end. And then I'm using BX sub filter right around 60 hertz it looks like. And I'm boosting some low end on there. Could have done this with R bass or Max bass or just any plugin that's gonna you know add some more saturation some more actual notes down to the low end. And then I uh, limited with this LA-2A from UAD. And that's really just holding it down, just kind of making a brick out of it. 
And then I uh, filtered out some high end that got added with that limit. So we just have some nice clean low end down there. Let's take a look at the high channel. Same DI sound. I'm throwing it into Saturn and using kind of Saturn as a way to get rid of a lot of the low end and then to also saturate some of this high end. Not really saturating the low end at all. There's a little bit, I guess I could literally just turn that all the way down. And then I use this heavy, heavy saturation all the way up from 416 hertz onward. That in itself actually sounds pretty nasty, but then I went ahead and threw it into this Ampeg from UAD. And you know, I probably could have done way more, but after doing those two, I thought they sounded pretty cool together. And then I did some processing on the base bus itself. This Pro Q3 was definitely, I did, definitely did these in context with the guitars to try to actually hear the bass high end a little bit. And looks like I actually shifted the low end of the bass to about an octave up from 60 hertz. So my kick drum was sitting around 60. I tried to boost the low end of the <clears throat> bass guitar up to 130. Let's listen with and without this plug in. This is without. With. Yeah, so I got rid of a little bit of that like grindy sound right here. And boosted some more high end. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And then I hit with BX Refinement again. Just getting rid of some of these whistles. Got the filter soloed. And added quite a bit of presence on that. Let's listen to bass and drums together. Let's take a look at guitars really quickly. So guitars were pretty, um, I wouldn't say they were involved, but there were multiple guitar channels. I didn't just have uh, you know two rhythm channels. There was a lot of octave guitars and a lot of not octave guitars going on. Um, I will say, actually a kind of cool behind the scenes thing, my guitar is tuned to drop A and this song's tuning is drop B. I couldn't tune up any higher because my strings are too big and I didn't really want to do any new strings. So using the quad cortex, I used a pitch shift block in the quad cortex and boosted it up to semitones. And then I just ran the DI basically through this. So I didn't do any guitar processing in the quad cortex. Um, I just went out of the quad cortex into my Apollo and I'm using some amp sims and logic. Also for the uh, octave down riffs and stuff, I'm also using the quad cortex with another pitch shift block with an octave down mixed to about 40%. So that's what you hear in all of these. Let's turn off the amp sim and listen at this octave on the left side. You can actually hear some of the artifacts from it going through the pitch block basically twice. Not not the best sound, but in context, you know, I mean, like it may sound a little funky, but it kind of, it did the job, I think. I'm using STL Tonality Will Putney Suite. And I think I pretty much left it almost all um, stock. I did go from 6L6 to EL34 tubes. I remember boosting the low end to six and the mids, I, I think I actually, the mids were at seven, I brought them down to almost four, and I wanted to put the high at seven, but I ended up bringing that down to four. I did turn on this distortion pedal that was not on, and the cabs, uh, I turned the 57 off axis a little bit and pointed it more toward the middle. That's pretty much all I changed inside of that, and this setup is across all the guitars, except for maybe one of the lead channels, I think I changed some stuff a little bit, but this is this is across the board. So this is what this octave guitar sounds like with STL tonality. And then on the normal rhythm guitar channels, like I said, it's the same setup exactly in the amp sim, but it's just the DI with the pitch shift up, not the pitch shift down. Turn on tonality, and that sounds like this. Let's 
take a look at lead guitars really or let's go ahead and look at these layer guitars um, there is an octave going on during these parts of the song this is the kind of like the intro riff and then the verse riff there's an octave going on around that I heard so I did an octave guitar because I didn't want to do a synth and that is literally just a DI, there's no amp sim on this. With Decapitator, absolutely crushing it. Making it sound all fuzzy and nasty. Then Micro Shift to put it out to the sides. That is 100% wet on that. Then we have Valhalla Vintage Verb. This is completely stuck, I don't think I changed anything on this. And then just some EQ to get rid of some nastiness. So that's, let's listen at that in the context of the mix. Yeah, I think that adds a lot. So here are the pick scrapes. It's the same uh, guitar tone from earlier. And I just left those on the right side because this octave layer was on both sides and I kind of just thought it was cool to, to throw it off a little bit. All right, and then let's take a look at the synth guitar that is over here on the down chorus, the lo-fi chorus. Uh, instead of doing a synth again, I just copied and pasted the lead guitar uh, line and did some, did some processing to it. So let's take a listen at the DI. And then I added this Logic Happy Fuzz Face, or Happy Face Fuzz. To make it sound a little synthier, I guess. And then we have Valhalla Vintage Verb at 60% mix. Other than that, it's completely stock. Then I threw that into some delay. Looks like I did a ping pong delay at about 50% mix with the Echo Boy Jr. And then you had to EQ it to make it fit. So there you go. Rolling off some lows, some highs, some nasty ringing frequencies. Looks like I wanted to tame this null a little bit. But then I had to boost right around 600 to get to stick through. Let's listen to that in the context of the mix. One more thing to take a look at would be these chorus keys. This is a contact instrument that I've just bounced down. It is the Gentleman. It's just a piano with some Valhalla Vintage Verb and some EQ on it, and then I just bounced it down. Um, it looks like I did a little more EQ to just kind of lo-fi it out. But it is adding, it's just doubling this lead guitar line in the chorus. Thought that was kind of cool. Then the last two things to look at on this before we take a look at the master bus would be I got some explosions. Gotta have them. And then this last kind of uh, outro riff, it did not sound quite big enough to me. Let's listen without this uh, sub drop. It didn't sound quite big enough for me coming out of this chorus. So just threw a sub drop on it, see if that would fix it. That's better. But there's also some automation to, to take a look at on there. In the hopes of trying to make that sound bigger, I actually boosted the bass at the very end and the kick drum. I did a little automation on the very first kick to make it a little louder. And then there's automation throughout the whole mix that we could take a look at. Just with me limiting the project so heavily on the master bus, these octave guitars kind of in the little interludes would bloom up to really loud levels. So I brought those down uh, every time that was an issue. And then this bass right here on this part, I brought the bass up a little bit because it was basically basically doing the sub drops. Yeah, that. Brought, brought that up. And then whenever it was doing the turnaround on the breakdown, I brought it down a little bit because it was just a little too heavy. Yeah. So there's that. So let's take a look at the master bus really quickly. We're starting it off with the BX Townhouse Compressor. Completely stock settings, except for I'm using the sidechain filter. 
up to like 130 hertz, pretty much anywhere between like 70 and 150 hertz is going to be a sweet spot on that. And that's basically just so your low end's not triggering the, the compressor too heavily. And what I was really looking for was a snare. I wanted to get around four decibels of gain reduction. Um, I'm not just out of the blue aiming for four decibels. That just kind of is typically where I can actually hear the compressor. It sounds like it's kind of grabbing the whole mix and kind of adding a little bit of movement. Let's listen. It's like I can hear whenever the snare hits, I can hear the mix come down and then back up. And I think that's really pre pleasant sound. So that's doing four to five decibels of gain reduction. And that's pretty much like all I did for the most part on mastering. I just let Ozone take care of it for me. I go up to the intelligent kind of master, you know, helper or whatever it's called. And it gave me this kind of, kind of curve. This is what it sounds like without Ozone. So really just a huge amount of, of change on that. There's a dynamic EQ, doing some stereo, stereo imaging. There's just a lot of stuff that I don't really understand, but I know that I throw it on there and it makes it sound better, so I keep doing it. Pro-Q3, there were some whistling frequencies that I heard on the overall mix. So I just pulled those out a little bit and I just think it pretty much immediately makes the mix sound better. Yeah, much less offensive. And then I did some more limiting. That's really been something I've tr been trying a lot more recently is just limiting that absolute heck out of the master bus. That's, that was a, was a huge issue I had with a lot of my mixes is how everything sounded very disconnected. Um, at one point and the remedy I found for that right now anyways and someone who knows more than me is welcome to leave in the comments um, if this is not what you would consider a best practice but just really slamming a limiter really just kind of squeezes everything together and so I'm gonna just keep going down this hole and see what it, what it, where it takes me to but yeah here's Pro L2 so that is the full mix of when We Were Young by Architects. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, please do let me know down in the comments and I will continue doing these in the future. Uh, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.